Welcome back to The Lead. We're live from Orlando this afternoon, just about 100 yards down behind me from where this horrific murder took place. President Obama and Vice President Biden arrived here separately just a few hours ago to do what I imagine so many Americans wish they could do themselves, and that is offer comfort directly to those who suffered most from Sunday's attack on Pulse nightclub. The president and vice president spending time with grief-stricken families, survivors, and hospital staff this afternoon. We're also going to hear from the president those comments coming any minute now. Michelle, Michelle Kaczynski, she is at the White House now. Michelle, this was an emotional day for the president again, him playing once again con yeah. consoler in chief in effect after just uh, the kind of tragedy we've seen so many times before in his administration. Right, Jim, exactly. I think those words, once again, are the operative words here because there's the challenge there. The president has done this exact same kind of trip nine times before today, and we've heard him speak as many times. You know, sometimes he's emotional, sometimes he's angry. How do you sort of keep delivering what is essentially the same speech? I think today, what he sounded like was tired tired of the fact that it keeps happening. Uh, and it was broad as well. I mean, it gets into the argument that especially has come up lately, that if you're talking about trying to fight terror, then maybe you're ignoring issues of people getting their hands on guns easily at home. And if you're focused on gun issues, maybe you're not focused as much on ISIS. Well, he tried to tackle both, saying that, first of all, tackling terrorism is something the administration is doing. But you can't ignore the fact that these last two attacks, this one and San Bernardino, were lone wolves, people who appear to have been radicalized at home and they were able to get their hands on guns. But it was also somewhat emotional. I mean, he talked about hugging and holding these families. Uh, the fact that they, they expressed grief beyond description told him that America needs to do more to stop this from happening and asked the president why it keeps happening. The president said that they don't care about politics and neither does he. In fact, he urged politicians uh, that are trying to prevent him from taking more actions uh, to prevent people from getting their hands on guns when they're deranged or they're radicalized, urged them to meet with these families and hear some of the words that they said today, Jim. Michelle Kaczynski at the White House. Four days ago, this community was shaken by an evil and hateful act. Today, we are reminded of what is good, that there is compassion and empathy and decency, and most of all, there is love. That's the Orlando that we've seen in recent days, and that is the America that we have seen. This afternoon, the Vice President and I had the opportunity to meet with many of the families here. As you might imagine, their grief is beyond description. Through their pain and through their tears, they told us about the joy that their loved ones had brought to their lives. They talked about their sons or their daughters. So many young people in their 20s and 30s. So many students who were focused on the future. One young woman was just 18 years old. Another said her father was a happy girl with so many dreams. There were siblings there talking about their brothers and their sisters and how they were role models that they looked up to. There were husbands and wives who had taken a solemn vow. Fathers and mothers who gave their full heart to their children. These families could be our families. In fact, they are our family. They're part of the American family. And today, the Vice President and I told them, on behalf of the American people, that our hearts are broken too, and that we stand with you, and that we are here for you, and that we are remembering those who you loved so deeply. 